Greetings everyone, Rackamdari here today with a Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. Uh, I have done this in the past and I did mention when I made my up my big update video or when I made one of the videos I gave an, a big update on, as to the new schedule uh, and one of those part one of the aspects of that update was basically every Sunday is going to be has the potential to being a variety day where I don't focus only on Runeterra Though I can upload Runeterra if that is something I choose to do, which I did last week. Uh, but this week I decided I wanted to upload some Duel Links. Um, you get Duel Links, matches go quick, they tend to be a lot easier for me to upload. And so I decided, given uh, the information, or given the current situation with my workplace, this would be a quick and easy video to be able to kind of put out for, uh, for today. As I mentioned in my previous video, my work, three people quit pretty much at the same time at my la at my workplace, which means uh, this coming week I will not be able to uh, have as many days off to work on content. So we are going to be focusing on uh, some quicker videos, videos that don't take forever to kind of render and upload, uh, namely being uh, these type of gameplay commentaries. Uh, that are you know pretty efficient. I just record them, upload them, and they're pretty much done. Uh, so today's video is going to be some Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. They are currently one of my favorite uh, events is ongoing. Um, I don't get to play the Duel, or Duel Links a ton. It does take a lot of time. It's a very grindy uh, game. Uh, thankfully it is on mobile so sometimes that helps but it it's just ridiculous sometimes how much grind this game asks of you. Uh, but basically, Turbo Duel Grand Prix is a very, uh, very fun kind of spin on the traditional Yu-Gi-Oh rules. Um, I guess Duel Links itself is a spin on the traditional rules, but this is an even bigger spin on those rules by giving you these speed skills that are really interesting, and they've been adding more and more kind of variety into these. They used to only have like two or three. Uh, and they sort of accomplish the same goal with like one or two exceptions, but now they're they all feel pretty unique so far. They've been they've done a pretty decent job at diversifying them and making them feel unique in their own way. And I really enjoy this kind of spin on things. It gives it gives some decks the potential to shine brighter as they might be able to uh, utilize the ability um, the abilities a lot better. It still kind of boils down to, you know, top tier decks just can still crush um, <laughs> in general. But, you know, sometimes you'll see some, you know, Yusei decks running around with Junk Sync Run and, and the likes and being able to actually uh, kind of compete more so than they would in the past. Uh, so today's video, we're going to play that, uh, play in this event. And I actually have a kind of a goal in mind to kind of spice things up. My goal is to win three duels in a row in order to gain these turbo duel quests um you don't have to win if you're you know if you're just playing this casually if you're uh unfamiliar with this type of thing uh the only thing you can't do is surrender you can all you have to do is play even if you lose you still get the gems uh it's a good thing to do every day during these competitive events that they host as they do give you 50 gems a day uh which is hard to come by in duel links so uh, but my goal is to uh, win those three matches, and that's kind of what we're going to do. I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of the deck that we'll be using as well, and we'll see if we can make it happen. Uh, so today's deck that we're going to be using is Arrow Mage. Arrow Mage has been getting, or has gotten a lot of support in the past, and the reason I chose this deck is because it was the first deck I ever used to reach King of Games. Uh, for any of my Runeterra viewers, or new viewers in general, King of Games is the highest obtainable rank in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Uh, and so, this was the first deck that I ever made King of Games with back in like 2018, I believe, when I first started playing. Uh, and so I wanted to try it out again. I've been, I really do like this archetype. It's a very fun one. Uh, really, uh, really interesting kind of spin. And I really like, uh, I really do like decks like this. Um, Basically, Arrow Mages are these plant lollies, and the idea behind them is life point manipulation. So they have a lot of effects based off of life points, and they have a lot of effects that not only gain life points, but also can 
sacrifice life points for other uh, as a cost in order to activate certain things. Uh, so that's a really fun deck. I definitely, uh, I've been enjoying this. I've been playing this a little bit on my phone. I haven't played it quite a ton. Uh, I am missing another more copies of Humid Winds. This is one of the main cards in the deck. This is our search engine. Uh, every time, uh, since it's a continuous trap, you can just constantly pay 1,000 life points to keep adding monsters to your hand if you so desire. Um, ideally, I'd probably have three of these, or at least two at the very least. So um, I'm currently very close to getting my second copy, um, which I would probably replace one, one of these with. Uh, but this is one of the main cards that we'll be using in combination with our other traps. The traps are pretty much the main way to gain and lose life. The spells are the main way to gain life, and then the monsters activate their effects based off of those conditions. Each monster has two effects. One when they gain, one effect activates on life point gain. One active, one is kind of a passive effect if you have more life points than your opponent. So for example, Kanang, uh, Kananga's effect uh, return spell and trap cards back to the hand on life point gain, and your all of your face up all of your opponent's face up monsters lose 500 attack and defense if you have more life points. And they all have that kind of thing. Jasmine, we have three copies of because this is going to be our primary draw engine. Every time we gain life, we draw a card. This will just help us cycle through our deck and get the stuff faster. Uh, the rest of them are pretty pretty straightforward. Rosemary, if you have more life points than your opponent. You can, your opponent can't activate any monster effects, meaning Sphere Karibo and Kiteroid as well. Um, so this is a really powerful thing. This happens on all of your monster attacks, so it's not just whenever she attacks. Really useful to getting around certain uh, hand traps that are popular nowadays. Uh, whenever you gain life points, you can switch a battle position. This can be pretty useful. Uh, Marjoram is our one of our new boss monsters in the deck. Uh, whenever a plant type monster is destroyed, we can special summon her and gain 500 life. And then every time you gain life, uh, you can uh, target monsters in your opponent's graveyard and banish them. Pretty useful in, or uh, in order to get rid of specific, uh, certain problematic cards. Um, modern Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of graveyard effects, so getting rid of them is pretty useful. Uh, and then we have Aroma Gardening and Aroma Garden. Garden is the main field spell. Auto include three of if you're playing Aramage is pretty standard. Uh, Aroma Garden has a lot of neat effects, especially uh, whenever you summon monsters, you gain life. And then if your opponent attacks you and you have less life than they do, you can special summon monsters from your deck, triggering its ability to gain life. Really powerful card. And it also triggers the monster's effect as well when you gain life. So you can do something like special summon Rosemary and then switch monsters to defense. And then we have one copy of Wall of Thorns, basically Mirror Force. Uh, Every time, a if a plant type monster is targeted for an attack, destroy all attack position monsters. People pretty much won't play around this. This is kind of our surprise surprise card of the deck in order to try and punish people for just being uh, wildly aggressive. And then we are playing a synchro deck. As I, as you noticed, we have a couple. We have a tuner, and then this card can actually transform other plants into tuners uh, whenever you gain life points. So. We are going to try and take advantage of these two cards. This one is more experimental. I've seen a lot of builds that don't run this. I thought it would be kind of fun, so I decided to try it out. Uh, and we're going to continue trying it out in today's video. Uh, but we have a couple of tuners. This is the Aeromage tuner herself. Um, Arom Ar Aroma Seraphi Rosemary. <laughs> um, I butchered that completely. Uh, basically, whenever you... Um, while you have more life points than your opponent, uh, the opposite effect of Kananga happens. You gain life, uh, you gain attack and defense, and then whenever you gain life points, you can negate face-up monsters. Uh, we do have some other pretty standard um, synchro monsters. Uh, we do have a lot of six-star synchro monsters because we will be. We do have access to. Uh, that particular level at using uh, Marjoram. We do have a three, a three, a level three synchro because we can combine that with uh, Jasmine. Um, and then we do have this level seven because we can use um, Aeromage Laurel to put Jasmine as a tuner and potentially synchro with Marjoram. Um, so I just put it in a level seven. Uh, these are just whatever good synchros you have. 
throw in there. It's completely, it's pretty much optional actually, because most of your most of your power cards are your uh, traps. So uh, the synchros aren't super necessary. So that's the deck. Let's go ahead and jump in to the games and see what happens. So the, as I mentioned before, the goal of the game or the goal of the day here is going to be winning three games. So let's see if we can make that happen. Jump into the uh, matches today. And we'll also go ahead, let's, t um, oh, we don't want that. We want the, we want the event, the event. Let's go ahead, um, see if there's any better. I do really like this particular, um, this particular bike as it gives us this ability, but let's see if there's anything else. Um, this one is Carly's, so we're not going to really need that. Uh, this one could be pretty useful. I think we'll I think we'll try Jack Atlas's. That might be pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think we'll do the Jack Atlas one. Let's do that. We can potentially gain a lot of damage, or we can draw cards. So let's do that. And we'll turbo duel. And from here on out, I can't edit or chop up anything. Or start the video over because now we are in the match we got to play all three of these and get the you know hopefully win all right you say fudo this is what I was saying um, a little bit earlier it's really interesting to see some of these decks get enabled by playing uh, this particular mode so let's try our best to see what we can do we do have the Jasmine we have blessed winds so this is going to be pretty neat We'll be able to activate. Oh no, he goes first. Never mind. Oh no, he's playing. He's playing Necro Valley. Why? Why would you do this? What kind of monster are you? All right, that's fine. So we can play the Aroma Gardening, and then we can activate Jasmine's ability in order to gain uh, life. Draw a card what we obtain wall of thorns i think we'll put the blessed winds down um not the blessed winds but the dried winds down but i will put wall of thorns instead i i don't feel like he's going to respect that possibility so we're gonna do that we are going to do that Counting on you, summon a monster. Let's see. This card on the field is unaffected by all other card effects as long as Necro Valley is on the field. Oh, what? Uh, why did he surrender? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You say, why are you so weak? You're about to like, you're about to clobber me. What the heck was that all about? I mean, I was going to destroy the Necro Valley, and I was, you know, I, I certainly had a lot of tools, but actually, I wasn't going to be able to destroy the Necro Valley because Dried Winds only targets monsters. So he actually had a lot of, he had a pretty good chance to taking that one home, but. <laughs> I guess he wasn't willing to grind it out, I suppose. We also rank up in the events, which is pretty nice. So there's one of our victories, as anticlimactic as that was. Let's go ahead and try game number two. A turbo duel. All right. Blair Flanagan's Maiden in Love completed. Another Yusei Fudo. Let's see. The opponent reached the first corner. I don't know what that means. I'm pretty sure it's like... How... Or who gets to go first, but I don't know how it determines who's going first with that text. I guess it said your opponent 
hit the reach the corner first, so I guess it means they are. Alright, so he's one face down card. He's got no extra deck. I'm disappointed in you. I'm super disappointed. Um, so I think we'll just... Um, uh, I don't know what to do here. Oh, we can actually... Yeah, we can special summon this. And we can turn one into a tuner. Which I'm actually... I'm okay with that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll actually go into... Uh, go into a synchro here. So we'll normal summon. I forgot to play this, but we'll, it doesn't matter. Because we have the garden as well. So we'll gain some life here. Throw this into defense, activate the effect, throw this into defense, and then we'll activate Garden, which will give us a, a, a thousand life, and then our Laurel will get to activate. So this is kind of what I was discussing uh, in the deck uh, introduction. Um, I, I think this is a pretty decent card. I think it's slept on, if I'm being completely honest. And we do have Blessed Winds, which allows us to special summon from the... Uh, it will allow us to special summon from the graveyard, so we can get our Rosemary back. Um, I'm actually going to end my turn, because I don't know what that face down is. We, I want to not risk it. Um, this is kind of a control deck in a way, so... The grindier games are much more beneficial to us than to our opponent. So, so I'll actually let him end his turn. All right. So if he's going to end his turn here, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Use the effect now. So, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, for any of my potential Runeterra viewers as well, um, if you're in the end phase, you're in the end phase. There's no way for you to uh, not be in the end phase. So, now that he's already declared that he's going to... Um, <clears throat> now that he's already declared en ending his turn, It ends his turn. There's no passing priority back to my opponent here. Um, so we obtain this. We're going to go ahead and change to attack mode. Um, we're going to activate our Aroma Garden. And then we're going to change her into defense mode because she already was in attack mode. And then we can just change her back to defense mode. Change to attack mode. And then we'll go ahead and activate Power Force in order to draw a card. We don't need, I don't think we'll need a thousand attack. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a card. And then I'll, I'll just go ahead and actually set this. So now that we have uh, Rosemary on the field, my opponent cannot activate card effects. We have more life points than them. And this includes any of these face down effects as well. So Fortress Warrior will not be able to activate. Once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Okay. Um, I'll actually go ahead and do the same for this. I do not want to. All right, it's it's Fortress Warrior. Because we have our Dried Winds, I think that'll putting them both face up is going to be uh, beneficial. We can even switch their battle position now that we have Rosemary. So we have targets for Rosemary. Let's go ahead. Um, I don't know what his... He's got one set card. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. He has Lava Golem. No, he's a burn deck. What a scumbag. What a scumbag. What a scumbag. All right, we're gonna re-summon from our deck. We're gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, grab Aroma Garden. Dried Winds will activate, allowing us to destroy one of these cards. And then 
Uh, I guess we'll do that. Oh yeah, we can negate them. I forgot. Alright, so we can actually... Um, yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna get, uh, take some damage here. Target one spell or trap card your opponent controls for that target. And then you can set one spell or trap from your hand. So he's going to use that. We're gonna go ahead and chain our ability in order to gain life or pay life. We're gonna bring uh, we're gonna bring this back. Let's see. Does he have something he can set here? He doesn't. So we just win. This should be game. And we can switch the battle position of this monster. Doesn't matter, we're gonna destroy it. It doesn't matter, we're gonna negate it. We're just gonna throw down everything. Alright, so we're actually just going to attack with the plants. Because I don't want him to have a kite roid. We're just gonna go straight in with the rosemary. There we go. GG. Well, there's two wins. Our first opponent didn't want to fight, and then our second opponent was a scumbag burn player. Uh, this just goes to show you the power that the arrow mages can have. A lot of them do reside or rely on their spells and traps, so pretty important to keep those online. Surprised my opponent even had a back row removal card. A lot of those burn decks just kind of ignore that kind of stuff in favor of uh, in, in favor of stally type cards like wall disruption so all right final match are we actually going to accomplish our goal today let's find out turbo duel another you say deck I really hope this ain't the same person All right, so our opponent is also running some extra deck cards. Pretty solid there. We're going first. Um, this is actually kind of annoying. Opening up the Rosemary is n uh, not super ideal because unfortunately she will tran put herself into defense mode. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just play our entire hand. Um, we're going to be able to use our abilities here to try and get stuff done. So, hopefully nothing too crazy my opponent can do. Uh, we'll be able to gain life using this, and then we can destroy monsters using this. So, that's kind of the goal here. We're going to send... The rosemary to the graveyard and then the turn uh, the following turn we will be able to um so this only works on monsters i think yeah so he's going to fusion summon this will be ddd monsters are kind of crazy by okay, searching I don't know what these guys... <laughs> I don't actually know what the this deck does I just kind of let them I just kind of watch them um, I think we'll be able to destroy that with our combo here. Uh, this is kind of risky, though. Uh, he's he's going to fusion first um, into this. 2800. Um, I'll just go ahead and activate this now so that we have it available. Um, I'm kind of hesitant here. So he's got the tuner. Uh, when this card is normal summoned, you can target one DD monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. Okay. So this will be somewhat problematic. Um, I don't know if I want to destroy the tuner or destroy... It has zero attack, so I think actually we'll, we'll prevent... We'll actually prevent... this synchro from happening 
We'll take some damage from his 2800 monster. But we should be fine otherwise. We've got two set cards. What kind of cards does this deck run? Hmm. Alright. So, battle phase. Ooh, I like seeing that. I like seeing that. We're gonna activate continuous trap. Do this. Alright, so his monster or his ability is active right now. Let's go ahead and normal summon the Kana the Kananga. Uh, hopefully he doesn't have Treacherous. That would be fairly frustrating. Okay, we're good. We'll be able to activate the Aroma Garden. He's got to activate now. Oh, ouchie, ouch, ouch. Fiendish Chain. And he's smartly going to cho uh, choose that. Well, actually not, because I can just return this back to the hand. Let me do this. Yeah, we're just gonna return Fiendish Chain back to the hand. Um, I think I'm negated for now. Uh, we're just going to... Uh, I think we'll just actually do this. It should be negated, right? Or no, the chain will... Hmm. Yeah, this is gonna happen first, so we will... Uh... Oh no, sweet! Sweet! We did get negated. Uh, and hopefully our opponent here does not have anything crazy. All monsters you control gain foreign and attack till the end of this turn. So we'll we'll do battle. Let's go. Not sure what this attack or this uh, face down will be, but we're gonna go ahead and go in. We know that this is fiendish chain, so we're going to try and end this duel. Is this going to be it? Drowning mirror force would be horrendous. But I doubt you're playing Drowning. I'm going in, my guy. Ooh, well, let's go! And that's game. The plant lollies crush the opponent with the power of um, plants, I guess? The power of wind. All of our cards are called, has wind in their title and name. The dried wind and... Uh, dried winds and... What's the other one called? Blessed wins or something. So there we go. Um, I'm actually surprised that <laughs> that worked as well as it did. But this is a really fun. Uh, it's a really fun deck. I really like it. Um, it's really fun. Like your opponent knows like all the cards you're going to be using, and you just have to kind of figure out how you want to uh, activate them and utilize their abilities. Uh, really satisfying deck as well so we are elite now um not sure how elite that is we didn't really get too much there now i can actually go and try and get another copy of one of the other cards um yeah i really like i mean i've said i think i've just said this like three times already <laughs> i really like this deck it's a lot of fun brings back a lot of memories from when i played uh, when I first started playing the game, really happy they finally put that support in the uh, put the support in. And as you can see here, we do have those gems that we have won from our opponent and crushed them with the force of cute lollies. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed, please leave a like down below uh, and subscribe and hit that bell notification for future card game content. I play Legends of Runeterra and Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links primarily. Uh, Runeterra being the bulk of my content with occasional Yu-Gi-Oh! videos as we have shown today. Um, I would highly recommend if you guys are looking for a free-to-play friendly deck. Arrow Mages are one of, if not the best. The majority of the cards you can obtain, uh, obtain for the deck are actually in the card trade. As you can see here, Rosemary is right there. There's the Tuner as well. So you can you can kind of see where it, most of the deck does come from this guy. The only thing that comes from the box will be those traps, the spells and traps. So I think I want to say that one of them is here as well. Yeah, you can see Jasmine is in this. So uh, this particular version of the card trader will happen 
or it will, uh, uh, what's the word? It'll always refresh with these cards, I'm pretty sure. So like you can guarantee three Jasmines by just play, uh, coming in here and getting, uh, trading her in. Um, these cards, the featured cards, will rotate, so you have to make sure you pick them up when they do arrive. You only need one copy of the tuner, you don't need too many of those. Um, and probably only one copy of Rosemary, depending on what other synchros you have. So, a uh, really fun deck. I'd, I'd highly recommend it. It will climb you pretty far once you get the hang of it. So, I'd recommend it. The rest of the cards, by the way, are in um, the uh, Fortress Gears box. So, as you can see here, my <laughs> remaining card, I came in here for heroes, um, so I have one more copy of uh, Human Winds to obtain, uh, but the rest of these cards will be uh, pretty cheap. Human Winds, I think, is the most expensive card, uh, but you can see Dried Winds is in here as well. They're all in the same box. Pretty good stuff, so definitely check that out if you're looking for a really, really cheap deck uh, and really easy to build deck for King of Games. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Later!